Hello, welcome to our workshop, How to Raise an Emotionally Intelligent Child. What is emotional intelligence? It's the ability to understand and accept our own emotions. It's the ability to regulate our emotions and our anxiety, our anxiety and therefore our behavior. It's also understanding and connecting with others. Why is emotional intelligence so important anyway? Well, it predicts success at work. People are often fired because they don't work and play well with others. They don't manage their anxiety, so they procrastinate. And they don't pick up on social clues, so they offend others. It also predicts relationship quality. People who can calm themselves and reconnect have more successful marriages. Emotional intelligence also predicts success at school, helps kids manage anxiety and emotion, helps them stay on task, and helps them get along with others even when they're frustrated. Kids with high emotional intelligence are easier because they can soothe themselves, they can regulate their emotions, they can manage their behavior, get along with others, and motivate themselves. So how can you help your child develop high emotional intelligence? You can take care of yourself so that you can self-regulate. Because when parents know how to self-regulate, it actually models and teaches kids how to do the same. They realize that they can actually work through their feelings instead of fighting. It also restores our connection to them. When parents self-regulate, the child builds a calmer, more resilient brain. They have better vagal tone, the amygdala is smaller, therefore less, less reactive. The prefrontal cortex matures faster, and there are more oxytocin receptors. So what are some self-regulation tools? Stop, drop, and breathe. Also self-care techniques such as meditation, sleep, and nurturing yourself. Also expect to grow and work on your triggers by breathing through your emotions. Mindfulness, resist acting when you're angry. Stop, slow down, wait. Don't take things personally and stay away from the edge. In other words, tend to the emotions, don't gather kindling. So what can you do differently starting today? You can prioritize connection, even when you're setting limits. Children need connection to feel safe and self-regulate. Oxytocin turns cortisol. Oxytocin turns off cortisol, which is a stress hormone. 80% of parenting is connection. Kids won't take direction unless they feel connected to you. All humans resist control. Connection actually gives you influence. It also puts the joy back in parenting. Connection plus self-regulation equals co-regulation. That means you, you are co-regulating with your child. Children rely on their connection with us to feel safe, which helps them regulate their own emotions so they can regulate their behavior, even when they're upset. What are some connection power tools? 24-7 empathy, feeling your child's feelings. Routines with built-in connection special time, spirited play and laughter, connect before you correct, and time in. How to strengthen your relationship with your child. So how do parents respond to their child's emotions? John Gottman and a team did a research project on that. And he talked about the different ways that parents tend to respond to child's emotions. One of them is disproving, disapproving. Punishing your child for expressing emotions. That would be something like, um, punishing would be, I'll give you something to cry about. Or shaming, um, a little scratch like that doesn't hurt. Look at your brother. He doesn't have this problem. Ridiculing, don't be a drama queen. Big boys don't cry. Blaming, you must have done something to make her so mad at you. This is all your fault, so there's no point in crying to me about it. Or isolating, calm down or go to your room. 
another way they respond to the kids is dismissing. So distracting them or trying to fix a problem, trying to make the emotions go away. For example, fixing. Don't get upset. I can do it for you. Distracting. Do you want to watch your show? You'll feel better. Or minimizing. You're overreacting. There's no reason to be upset. Also, there's asking questions. Why are you so upset? Lecturing. Here's what you need to do. Or ignoring. Don't bring it up. That'll just remind her about it. and She'll be sad. Another way that parents tend to respond to their child's emotions is laissez-faire or overwhelmed. So, for example, philosophizing. Well, you can't win them all. If you notice in the moment, it'll shut feelings down. And it's all right to give wisdom, but wait until your child has had a chance to process their feelings. And then there's hunkering down. The best thing to do when you feel bad is just to write it out. And then there's distancing. Let him be. <clears throat> He'll be better once he calms down. You know, this gives a message to the child that he is all alone to deal with these big emotions. What is emotion coaching? Accepting, validating, supporting the child to problem solve. Be their safe place where they can come. So this looks like listening, like for example, hmm, noticing, you look sad, empathizing, hearing your friends say that could really hurt your feelings, setting limits on behavior as necessary, even while allowing emotion. So that would be, for example, look how angry you are. I can see you're angry because of such and such, but don't hit your brother. Use your words. It's also validating, which would be something like, no wonder you're upset. And teaching self-soothing while honoring emotions. It's okay to feel sad. What can you do right now to help yourself feel better? Research done on emotion coach kids showed that compared to children whose parents are either authoritarian or permissive, emotion coach kids have better health, better behavior, better resilience, better self-regulation, better success in every way, better academic performance, and they're also more cooperative when you set limits on them. How do you emotion coach? So you accept and you empathize with the child's emotions so the child works through them. You help the child to problem solve. You help the child understand and get along with others. And you help the child to make emotional repairs when they need to. Emotion coaching starts early. Children learn to self-soothe by being soothed. They develop secure attachments. They build neural pathways to soothe themselves. They learn that it's not an emergency, and they learn to regulate their own emotions. Kids learn empathy by receiving it from us. Wondering what others think and feel develops empathy. Emotion coaching. Allow feelings, but limit behavior. So some of the words you might say to the child, um, we'll try again tomorrow. You wanted such and such. You wish you could such and such. It's so hard when you are having a hard time. I will help you. It was hard for you. When we can't deal with our kids' emotions and tell them to stop, that makes them anxious. They stuff their feelings, for example, in a backpack. Symptoms of a full backpack include the child being defiant or rude, uncooperative, lashing out, demanding, picking fights, being rigid and controlling, and being whiny and weepy. What are some secrets about anger? Anger is a body's fight response to threat. Threat is often the fear, powerlessness, and grief that's in the backpack. Acting out anger only makes it worse, and rage doesn't dissipate until it's heard. To heal anger, go under it to the more vulnerable emotions that are actually driving it. 
So how can you do some preventative maintenance? You can show empathy. You can have special times with your kids. You know, those, for example, would be times that they can choose what to do. And you go along with them and let them just focus on having fun. Uh, rough housing, welcoming all emotions and routines. When we allow emotions, kids learn self-regulation, resilience, empathy, and um, they have emotional health. And that is the end of our workshop. Thank you so much for joining us.